Okay, good morning, good morning everyone. Good morning, everybody. Good to be with you this morning. We uh, have our folks on the phone. We're hoping they can hear us. Um, Bertie, you can give us a thumbs up if you got your phone call this morning. Um, make sure it's all working. Every, they changed their whole software, of course. Mm-hmm. Morning, Joe. Hi, Joe. Good to be with you this morning. And let's see, we'll have a few people. Oh, there we got a few more jumped Oh, very in. good. Hi, Lou and Jean. Good morning. And good morning, all. Good morning to everyone. We see some of the names and not others, so it's always like an interesting guessing game. Uh, it's good to see you all. Hi, hi, Joyce and Michelle. Bertie, good morning. Um, Bertie, did the phone call work uh, this morning? Give me a thumbs up if it did. Good morning, Sue. Hi, Sue. Good morning. <clears throat> it seems like I've got 12 people oh, on yeah. the phone. Birdie okay. gave you a thumbs up. All right. Okay. Thanks, Birdie. All the software changed, so <laughs> has this Every, Everything battle. changes. Yeah. Uh, life is constantly in a change flux. Flux uh, of change. Yep. Yeah. All right. Let's All right. get started, right? Shall we get started this let's morning? Let's get started. On Hi, this Deb. Wednesday morning, is it? Yes. Yep. Uh, the 10th. 10th of uh, March. March 10th. <laughs> March 10th. Yeah. March 10th. Yeah. <laughs> All right, some good words this morning, excellent words that um, uh, really uh, can really hit home, I I think, for us today. Um, The first comes from Jeremiah 31, 3. It says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have drawn you with loving kindness. I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have drawn you with loving kindness. It's interesting that Love draws in, if you've noticed. Uh, Mm -hmm. Love drives in, Mm -hmm. hate pushes away, Mm -hmm. right? And uh, we have a God who seeks to draw us close to him through his loving kindness. A God, as we talked about yesterday, who is both merciful and just. Mm -hmm. And that is seen in his his love for us, a love that is both merciful and and a love that is is just, and it's this love that God has for us that that draws us in, and it's everlasting. Uh, it's the mark of God. When we think of one of the characteristics of God, uh, this is the one. Uh, God is is love, and it's this loving kindness that that draws us in. Our second uh, uh, second reading is from First John four sixteen. And here's what it says. God is love. And those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Uh, One word that stands out, obviously, in that passage, well, there's a couple, but abides three times we hear it. Uh, God is love. So it's the description of this thing that this God who draws us in to relationship uh, in love, in mercy, and in justice. He pulls us in. And then we are, as those who have been drawn in, can abide in that love. The love that God has for us joins us to him, and then we can be joined to others. Uh, and so this, this, this is you know, just a powerful word here uh, mm-hmm. that we have this morning of, of this mark. <laughs> the something that marks us as different is that we are people who've been drawn in by God's love and seek to be people who abide in that love, live in that love, and then rest, share, in, re- that rest love, in that love. Are secure in that love. Yeah. And and then share that that love that draws in rather than pushes away. And as we turn our attention to the book of Romans, uh, Paul is talking to the Christians in Rome, both from a Jewish uh, <laughs> background, heritage, heritage yeah. and, and Gentiles as well. That's what he ministered to, if you remember, in the book of Acts. First he would go to the Jews, and then he would go to the Gentiles. Yeah. And so Paul is now um, really calling the Christians in Rome to abide in God's love. Not the things of this world, not religion. N- not, not even it, their own sense of goodness or following the law. Right, right. right. And so uh, Paul is calling them to abide in in God's love. That's what has brought about a radical life change to them, God's love, 
which is marked in the blood of Christ. Uh, there's a physical thing that we can grab a hold of, a physical mark, uh, if you will, um, that, uh, that, that we can grab a hold of, that, that this, this love is tangible, it's real, and we can abide in it, and we are called to abide in it uh, as we represent God. So uh, we will turn to, to Romans chapter, okay, chapter so 2. Our reading for today is Romans 2, 17 through 3, 2. Ro starting at Romans 2, 17. Romans 2, 17. Uh, before I start that, um, just because Romans is so much, I'm going to read out of the message two verses from the last couple of days to just... Uh, propel us into the reading for today. So I'm reading from Romans 2, 4. God is kind, but he's not soft. In kindness, God takes us firmly by the hand and leads us into a radical life change. And then uh, Romans 2, the end of verse 13, I think, it says, doing, not hearing, is what makes the difference with God. Doing, not hearing, is what makes the difference with God. Uh, so it's this idea of the radical life chain be, change in us being lived out in what we do. So we don't just hear it and have this sense of like going in one ear and out the other, but it, it changes the way we live and who we are and how we think and move and live and breathe. Um, so keep those verses in mind as we move into Romans 2.17. Um, and uh, he, here's one other thing I want you to keep in mind. Um, it talk, Paul is talking to Jewish believers who have become Christian. And, but I want you to think of it as a Jew, as someone who believes that the law can save them. So in other words... If they're a good person, or at least good in their eyes, that they would be saved or right with God and right with other people. Um, and um, so we'll, we'll come back around to it. I'm just going to start reading now. Romans 2, starting at verse 17. If you're brought up Jewish, don't assume that you can lean back in the arms of your religion and take it easy feeling smug because you're an insider to God's revelation, a connoisseur of the best things of God, informed on the latest doctrines. I have a special word of caution for you who are sure that you have it all together yourselves and, because you know God's revealed word inside and out, feel qualified to guide others through their blind alleys and dark nights and confused emotions to God. While you are guiding others, who is going to guide you? I'm quite serious. While preaching don't steal, are you going to rob people blind? Who would suspect you? The same with idol ad adultery, the same with idolatry. You can get by with almost anything if you front it with eloquent talk about God and his law. The line from scripture, it's because of you, Jews, that the outsiders are down on God, shows it's an old problem that isn't going to go away. Circumcision, the surgical ritual that marks you as a Jew, is great if you live in accord with God's law. But if you don't, it's worse than not being circumcised. The reverse is also true. The uncircumcised who keep God's ways are as good as the circumcised, in fact, better. Better to keep God's law uncircumcised than break it circumcised. Don't you see it's not the cut of a knife that makes you a Jew. You become a Jew by who you are. It's the mark of God on your heart, not of a knife on your skin that makes a Jew. And recognition comes from God, not legalistic critics. So what difference does it make who's a Jew and who isn't? Who has been trained in God's ways and who hasn't? As it turns out, it makes a lot of difference, but not the difference so many have assumed. That's our reading for today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a lot. Uh, let's see if we can unpack it just a little bit. 
Um, remember, God is kind, but he's not soft. In kindness, God takes us firmly by the hand and leads us into a radical life change. And it's doing, not hearing is what makes the difference with God. And so Paul is pressing further into that and really getting into um, the way that sometimes as people who say we follow Christ, we say one thing and do another. Um, that's all of us, um, if we're honest. And, um, and so we, we kind of have it out and we just say, yeah, we, we want to be people with integrity as we follow you, Jesus. Uh, but that is not something we can do on our own. It's, it's a mark of God's love on our heart that allows us to do that, uh, to be people that place ourselves at the foot of the cross for God to work a radical life change in us, um, where because we have experienced the love and mercy of God because of Jesus' death and resurrection. We go, I'm going to lay down all of who I am and follow you with my life and let you in, Holy Spirit, to start working in my heart so that uh, there is more integrity in who I am and that the things that I say line up with the things that I do and that we would be people that would be so resting in God's love for us. Um, it takes humility to do that because we are, we know who we are without the love of God covering us and Jesus' sacrifice covering us. Uh, but then it fills us with courage. Um, so we are people of humble courage and we go out into the world that way as opposed to as people of double talk or hypocrisy. And I, and, and I think, you know, Paul is really here focusing on this idea of, you know, you can't be saved by your, by your religion. And, and he's talking to Jews. But and like a going through the motions motion. religion. Right. And he's talking to the Jews there who are falling back onto circumcision, um, kind yep. of the old laws, the old rules. You know, but he's still talking to us today. Yeah, we we can't be saved by our religion, just going through the motions. We can't be saved by thinking, "Well, I'm a good person." Well, and I would say that's a lot of the way our culture thinks. Well, I'm a good person, or they're a good person. Right, and that doesn't bring us that doesn't bring us make us right with with God. Only the mark of God's love in Christ upon us. That thing that brings about this radical life change is the thing that that makes us new and and different, and that's really what Paul is trying to to get at here. He's really what we're call what we'll say is he's bringing the law here. Yeah. All right. All right. The truth. He's shining the light on the truth that we can't save ourselves no matter what we do or where we come from or who we are. The good news in Romans is that Paul, the switch will come. And you, yeah. we're, we're going to hear the switch. Uh, but Paul is, is starting first with the Christians, right? He, he, he's saying, uh, you know, we got to look at ourselves before we look at, at others and point fingers at others. We, we can't be teaching others if we're not doing it, getting it right our, ourselves. Well, and it's, it's interesting because it's really arrogant, if you think about it, to say that we're good outside of God's work in our life. Because God, the creator of the universe, is the one who looked at everything he had made and said it was good. It was good. And when we're honest with ourselves, we realize we're like what Paul says. We have places of double speak in us where we don't live like we should, and so we need the forgiveness and the death and resurrection of Jesus to make us right with God. And then as people who know that and live in it and abide in it, as yeah. we heard today, that's when we can start to see our identity in Christ, that we're new people. We don't have to, we don't have to live in the law. We can live in the gospel uh, that in Christ we have a, a, a radical life change. And we are in, in God's sight uh, loved and forgiven. And made whole, and we can start living that yeah. that way. Um, you know, again, it's the have to versus want to. Mm -hmm. uh, when I want to do something, mm -hmm. it, you know, then I'm really excited about fired what, up, uh, right? When I have to do something, uh, you know, and 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 Paul is saying here, it's it's a want to kind of life. Yeah, uh, that's because of what Christ has done for us, because we've been marked in God's love and abide in God's love. 
there's a lot there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, uh, but I think it can be very applicable to our lives today. Paul's message to the Romans, written 2,000 mm -hmm. years ago, very applicable to our, our, our lives uh, today. Um, when we see our, our desperate need and to abide in the love of, of God in Christ, that really changes us. That's what changes us. All right, uh, prayers for today. Um, I know uh, Pat Saltwich's sister-in-law passed away. Uh, so we pray for that family, the Mush, Mush family. Yep. Uh, we pray for Jackie and Jean, who both uh, underwent surgeries, or, or I think they, they both yes, did and are now, yesterday. Now, now are recovering. Can't well, we've been praying for uh, some people who lost their jobs, and I, I just have to tell you, exciting news, answer to prayer. One woman we've been praying for was offered a new job three hours after she lost her job and started yesterday so we just celebrate god's goodness to her in that and remember for others who are uh still looking still looking mm -hmm. pray for our the easter event uh, as as we continue in this season of of lent um you know as we journey toward the cross this idea of continuing to be with jesus so we can be like uh, jesus and that we can share uh we can be people of of love um uh, and you know, uh, draw draw people in, and that's really what we're trying to do with this Easter event, is draw people into the truth of the, the good news uh, that Jesus died and rose again to make us part of the family. Mm -hmm. uh, we're praying for cancer, people who are battling for cancer, healing, healing COVID, um, those that are broken hearted or in in just places of emotional distress. Yeah, um, as well, and um, let me pray. Yep. Loving God, we love you because you first loved us. You always reach out to us before we respond to you. May we always have love in our hearts for you and for one another. As you abide in us, may we grow closer to you. And on this day, Lord, we seek to continue to, to be with you. A, a strong desire to be with you in our day-to-day -day life because it's when we're with you that we become more like you. Uh, and, and that's what we long for, Lord, this radical life change that you have made possible in your son, Jesus Christ. The mark of love revealed on a cross as, as, as Christ's blood was shed, the ultimate sacrifice to pay the price for, for our sin. And Lord, we recognize that today, that we fall back onto our old way of thinking and our old way of living, thinking that... that uh, because of our history, because of our connections, because of our religion, uh, Lord, that we are made right. But, Lord, um, those things don't. Only you do. Uh, and so, Lord, we want to focus and build our life on that, on that truth uh, today and as we move forward. Uh, Lord, um, today we come to you with concerns on our heart. We know you are a God who draws us in with your loving kindness. You love us. You want what's good for us, uh, your people. Uh, and so we pray, Lord, for Rich and Tom, Mary Ellen, mm -hmm. those who continue to struggle with COVID. We pray for those who are dealing with emotional uh, stressors and uh, you know, just difficulties in their lives. Uh, Lord, depression, anxiety, fear that just overtakes us. Uh, Lord, um, uh, we know you want and bring peace into our lives. Uh, we continue to pray for others who, who deal with or are dealing with health issues, recovering from surgery today. We especially pray for Jackie and for Jean. Uh, just, Lord, be with them in these very difficult days. For the Mush family uh, as they deal with loss. Uh, and just give them your peace, Lord, uh, in this time uh, that, that they would know that they are loved. Uh, and that uh, their loved one is is with you, uh, and we're grateful for that. Uh, for, for good news on the job front, uh, for, for those who have received employment, we're thankful, Lord. Uh, you work in miraculous ways, and you provide for us in our time of need, and we're grateful, and we, we recognize that and are thankful for that today. We pray also for, um, for those who are continuing to look for work and just uh, provide, Lord, uh, uh, for, for them. Uh, our Easter event that's coming up, Lord, um, we want to uh, be people who draw 
uh, others into you, Lord. And so uh, we just ask uh, for all the, the work uh, behind the scenes, the time, the hours, the effort, uh, Lord, that, that our neighbors, um, the next generation would have the opportunity to uh, really experience uh, your life-changing love, uh, your radical love for us, and the mark of that love revealed on the cross and an open tomb. And as we head to the tomb, or to the to the cross in this season of Lent, Lord, to keep us focused on, on you and our desperate need for you in our lives, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. Yeah, we will see you all tonight. You're welcome to join us at seven. All right. Yeah, I'll yeah. put the Zoom link on Facebook too. I didn't do yeah. that um, last week, but I'll, we'll do that. Yeah. So uh, we'll we'll gather for our marks of love. <laughs> And uh, truth is what we're talking about tonight, if I do recall. Yes, yes, that's right. <laughs> and that is a mark of love, truth. Yeah. All right. Uh, God's blessings to you all. You guys have a great day. And uh, Yep, good to be with you good all. Good to be with you. Okay, bye-bye, bye-bye. now.